What's up guys, this is Sean Tan and today we will be another episode of Asking Sean. Okay, so question number one would be from Gabriel. Right, uh, he's from Brunei and uh, sup? So what is happening is that uh, the way he asked the question which is uh, IHC in, in the context of property in Malaysia right, it's called investment holding company So it's one of the tool that people set up to actually acquire buildings la. Like uh, for us, we buy one house, two houses, so no split really right uh, These people actually, actually they form companies to buy properties They can buy up to 20, 30, 40 and uh, that is the context of him la. so now he is actually considering because he has a lot of properties la, right but then uh, he's asking whether should he form an IHC instead of buying as a personal so Gabriel to, un to answer this question right it's a very technical question actually so for the benefit of the audience uh, if you all cannot understand try before i answer this uh, just a brief introduction and comparison between buying again as a company and buying as an individual right so buying an individual uh, the first thing is we get 90 percent loan for the first property second property 90 percent loan third property max 75 or 70 right now right so this still come so a lot of people choose to then go for commercial properties which is like 80 or 85 percent sometimes right but then as a company, max you only can get 60% loan. And 60% loan uh, upfront means 40%, right? That's a lot of money. Lah. But then uh, if you still you have cash flow, then I won't stop you. But then if uh, this you can only start loaning and getting loans, right? After two to three years. Now it's three years of operations. So you need to prove to the bank that your cash flow, how you get your income and things like that and that is provided if surplus, right? Some investment setting is currently you have four properties, right? So four properties you can refinance, whichever that is, uh, has capital appreciation, right? You can refinance them under your company. Means, I don't know how to show this, but means uh, like now I have property A, which I buy 300,000 now worth 500,000, I can refinance out another maybe 70% or 60% I can still get money out so that's why I will use a company to actually acquire my personal property right so to place that under my company so that's the common use of investment holding company like in Malaysia that's why they advise people to free up like more my quota just now we discussed right two max ready so I want more 90% quotas right so I can actually use this company to eat up these two Right, then I left with zero again. Then I can start buying my first and my buying my second again. So that's how the tool is used. But in your case, uh, I think that it's to if you want to avoid tax, right? If you want to avoid income tax, because if whatever property is included here, the profit will be considered as rent. Then your maintenance costs, your your car to actually collect rent, or your management fees to collect rent. All that can be write off from the tax, but then that tax is only valid if it's money making, like if it's cash flow positive, right? So before you actually do that, there's a lot of administration work to convert this individual own into a company, and you need to wait for two to three years for it to actually be valid, and you can actually acquire more. So it depends how long term are you looking into it. Then, if it's income tax. Personal 28, right? Personal income tax is 28%. Here is 26%. Provided your your the, the rental that you collect, right? That is actually way higher than the cap really. Like, so you are like more than you are a half a million, more than half a million kind of guy. Then your rental, like, I'm, I'm talking about your rental amount. So let's say one unit is five thousand per month, which is sixty thousand a year. You got four or five units, then you only three hundred thousand. But you still haven't hit that cap, right? So if you haven't hit that cap, then you won't be uh, 20 over 28 percent still. So to me, it depends what is your objective. Is to avoid tax in the long run because you still want to buy another five and then go for company. Because to be very honest, right? I have a lot of uh, friends who are in business, right? 
they buy, they acquire projects or they acquire properties, right? It's not for the property itself actually, it's actually to get that uh, cash flow. Like, I don't know whether it's this legit or not, but like, let's say a uh, shop lot is 1 million, right? They were then currently it's selling for 900,000. So what they do is they will always uh, press lower and get higher SPA price. So like, let's say they'll get for loan for 1.1 million, then they actually control out, they'll get another like extra 200,000 out maybe, right? So for in this instant, in this example, 200,000 then can become the cash flow for them to turn around their business. And the best part is housing loan rate instead of SME loan rate or personal loan rate and things like that. So this is one of the reasons why people are acquiring real estate as well. It's a financing tool, right? Another way is that people buy uh, properties, right? And then they put into the business company, right? Then when they exit, they will just sell off the entire company. So you can actually avoid RBGT via that because when you acquire a bigger company, buy a small company right you don't have to actually pay tax for whatever buildings under them right so that's one of the ways people also avoid tax uh, my take my take is that I've seen a lot of seafoods in Malaysia right Malay and Chinese seafoods are uh, about this real estate right they own 50 still under personal so there's no need to actually have a company to do so just that if you want to run it under a company right because the main kryptonite is actually that 60% quota so if I am an individual takong chai I eat I get wages right I get salary so my income is actually constant then it may be a problem if I turn into a company because of cash flow right so if you have a company that is running that is super healthy in cash then money is just another extra I'm looking for alternatives to invest then go for company lo. so I think that's all for this episode uh, Mr. Gabriel I hope that I answered your question uh, amazing having uh, so many properties right oh, thank you again for your question I really hope that I answered it I hope because it's a very technical thing so maybe uh, you can get a tax consultant as, as discussed with Mr. Gabriel also I've got my lawyer to speak about this as well uh, he mentioned the, almost the same thing is that what's your objective if you want to get away from tax then you this strategy if you want to get more like 20 more units this is the strategy so I'm not sure whether what strategy you are going for and what's your objective but those are the possibilities that you can actually go for uh, maybe you can think about what you want like 5 years or 8 years or 10 years down the road with your property portfolio then we can talk more about it. If you really like this video, like it, share it and even subscribe for more Q&A like this. Uh, so if you guys want to send me anything, my email is down below. Ciao!